three questions we're going to answer today is what is a stock, what drives stock returns, and a good versus a bad company. So what is a stock? Firm ABC, for example, has $500 a year in earnings, shares outstanding of $100, book value of $1,500. So if we were to buy one share, we'd own 1% of the firm's book value and 1% of the firm's earnings, which equates to $15 for book, $5 a year for earnings, for this year's earnings. So what does that mean? Well, if we were to apply a growth rate to these earnings, um, let's say 10% a year, um, year two, 550, year three, 605, year four, 666, year five, um, 732. And we discount, we had to discount the, those earnings by uh, our required return or the firm's weighted average cost of capital. The reason, why, the reason we have to do that is because, well, we're not gonna lend the money for free, right? You have to, um, you know, we don't, yeah, we have to earn something, right? So what is the WAC? Well, that's um, the weighted average cost of capital. It takes into account what stockholders expect to receive and what bondholders expect to receive. Um, and we weight it. Um, I'm not gonna do it right here, but I'll do it in another video. Um, if, you know, for, for example, it might be 8%, might be the discounted, it might be the WAC, or you can, you, you can just use your own required return if you want, that's easier. Um, and then we have to, and then we have to apply eternal value because we can't forecast forever. Um, if we if we can only reasonably forecast for the next five years, we'll just forecast out to there and add in the terminal value. And if you're asking what the terminal value is, it's essentially what the firm is worth past the forecasted period. Um, so after this after the five years, um, so then we would take that terminal value, add in the discounted earnings from the past five years. So we discount these um, yearly. So Year, year, because money in five years isn't worth five hundred, you know, seven hundred thirty-two dollars today. It's worth, I mean, in five years will be worth less than it does today. Is worth to us today, so we've got to discount that. Um, so I don't know how much it would be worth, but maybe this is worth five hundred dollars to to us today. Paying five hundred dollars today to get seven hundred thirty-two in five years, essentially. Um, and then we add, we'd add all that back up, and that would be the entire value of the enterprise today, the present value of the enterprise. Obviously, we'd have to divide by the shares outstanding, and then that would be the value of each share. So that is what a stock is. It entitles you to the future earnings of the company, and you have to be prudent and, um, and analyze these earnings and the, the strength of them, and if they're going to grow or not, and how much you're willing to pay for the earnings of the company in the, in the next five years or however long you're forecasting out. Um, okay, and then number two, what drives stock returns? Well, what drives stock returns mainly is return on equity and, and return on invested capital. Um, what return on equity is, is and um, return on invested capital is, is it, it's the um, net income, net income, or you can use free cash flow, slash free cash flow, free cash flow divided by, well, for, for return on invested capital, it would be invested capital or for return equity, equity, invested capital. Um, so for example, if a firm makes $10 a year, a lemonade stand makes $10 a year, and it took $50 to build the lemonade stand, well, then that's one fifth uh, or 20%. On, on capital, on invested capital, invested capital. So that's a pretty decent return. So we'd have to, but you, ha you also have to make sure that they're not destroying value. For example, if the firm has a lot of high interest debt and the weighted average cost of capital is very high, well, they're destroying value if they're not making more than the, than, than the, than the way, than the whack or yeah, so if they have a WAC of 10%, if WAC is 10%, weight average cost of capital is 10%, then they have to earn more than 10% in order to create shareholder value. In order to create shareholder um, value. So, um, so a good company would have 15% or more uh, for return on invested capital. And obviously, you don't want them to be overloaded with debt, uh, high interest debt especially, 
I mean, debt, that debt can be a good thing if it's used to earn higher rates of return. So if they can get uh, a loan of $50 million at 10%, um, but if they can return, I mean, make 20% or 30% on that money, then that's money well spent, money well invested. That brings us into a, that brings us into the next point, a good versus a bad company. So a good company will have a high return on invested capital. I think return on invested capital is more important than return on equity because it factors into uh, account debt, which is a main main thing. Um, so a good company, we'll, we'll we'll do it side by side. A good company, good versus a bad company. So a good company might have a lack of. Um, Let's say, I don't know, 8%. Now, WAC, a high WAC isn't necessarily a bad thing. If WAC can be calculated in a lot of ways, if a security is very volatile, that can cause a higher WAC. Um, the main thing is what, it, what is the return on invested capital or equity. I think return on invested capital is a better measure, like I said. Um, so let's see. And then RIC, return on invested capital. Uh, if, if you can find something, a, a firm with over 25%, that's that's very good. Um, you'll be that, that's very good. Uh, a bad company might have a whack. Maybe let's say they had a lot of high, a lot of high interest debt. They might be paying. Um, let's see, and they might have a whack of maybe twelve percent or more. Um, and if they have an RIC, if they're if they're only making let's say eight percent on the money that's invested, that's a negative four percent. Um, return there and that's that means they're destroying shareholder value as opposed to the to this firm which is creating shareholder value shareholder um, value of 25% uh, minus the 8 which would be 18% right no 17% 17% uh, a year, and that's very good. Um, it also depends on what you pay for the firm. Like, this is very good, but if you pay too much, then you'll lose money. Um, then the expected return is negative. Um, so they're earning 17% on the book value of this. So they're earning 17% on this, on the, on the book value of the share. If you pay 10 times book, then you're only getting one tenth of this. So you're only getting 1.7% of that um, because you're paying, let's say, 10 times book. Um, that would mean you're paying $150 a share. Let's see. For, um, so if they had book value of 15, you're paying 10 times, you're paying $150 a share. And if the book value is growing at 17%, that's great, but you're only really getting you know, a one tenth of that because you're paying substantially more. Let's go down.